Dr. Rehema Feleke, co-founder and CEO of FunBand, and you are watching Ion Business. I'm Dr. John O'Keefe, Breakthrough Specialist from Center for Peak Performance, and you are watching Ion Business. Hi, this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. And I want to welcome Rehema Feleke. I mean, with my New York accent, it doesn't come across <laughs> real well. But nevertheless, welcome. Uh, Rehema is the uh, CEO and founder of a company called Funloop. Nice to have you Thank on you, our David. show tonight. Thank you, David. Uh, I understand that you're an MD mm -hmm. and you're a mother. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little about yourself, because I want to get into how Fun Loops came about. Absolutely. I've been a practicing emergency medicine physician for the past 10 years or so. In the last couple of years, I felt the need to develop a new skill set, so I went to business school at UCI. While there, we came up with the idea of this Fun Loop, um, and so we entered the business plan competition. We won first place, and we decided to go ahead and take it to market, which is why I'm sitting here and why we're, how we got here. Now, when... <laughs> No offense, but when I think of Fun Loop, I have a very distinct impression of Fun Loop. I mean, I think of cereal, and I think of something that kids would have fun playing with, like yes. a hula hoop, but a little different. So, what is Fun Loop about? So, fun lo parents go to amusement parks to have fun. Uh, the worst nightmare of any parent is to lose sight of their child in a big, crowded venue like Disney World. Fun Loop is meant to decrease the worry so parents can have more fun and less worry. They put the fun loop on their child, they have an app on their phone that they can see exactly where their child is at any time, and if for, what, for whatever reason the child is out of their sight, they can see where they are exactly. Now, I lost my son. He, he came back, actually. It was like, yeah, so you had to lose him permanently, but I was yeah. down at Dolly World, and he was on a roller coaster, and I went to the back part where we were supposed to come out and never came back out. He decided to go back, a shortcut back to the top. But I was really, really nervous. So I can really see the, the benefit of having something like that. But how does it work? Does it work on cellular frequencies? Um, how accurate is it? It's very accurate. It has a GPS chip, and that's how the location is obtained. And then we use a wireless network to communicate that coordinate, coordinate to the app. But do you use cellular network, or do you develop something special for that venue? It is. We develop something special for the venue using this wireless network. Okay. Now, what kind of technology do you use? We use a, a, a more recent wireless technology um, for the wireless network, and then that is coupled with the GPS, and then also the uh, Bluetooth that's in the wristband to connect it to the phone. All right. So it's a wristband. So you put a this wristband on, on the child. You put it on the child. What if the child decides to take it off? Like, I, have, I like blue, uh, I'm wearing pink, or you have blue, I say, let's switch bands. Can I yeah. do that? What happens? No, we have some security measures to be sure that if it is taken off the child, the parent is alerted immediately. Um, so we're planning on a metal circuit to ensure that if it is disconnected, meaning the band is off, mm -hmm. then the alarm on the parent's app would go off. Um, we'll also have some mechanical security measures where it's actually secured on the child's wrist. Okay, now, uh, I'm a parent. I have a, an app on a phone so I can check where my child is. Okay, and I would assume it beeps or something like that. Um, is there something at the venue where the security people at the venue also can track the person? At this point, it's just for the parents to track, but there is a phone number on the app. If you do find that your child is missing, you can push the button to alert security that, hey, my child is missing, and okay. then they can help join that. But at this point, the venue is not tracking the children. The parents are. Now, do I buy this at Best Buy? Do I get it at the venue? Um, you know, is it leased? How do I do this? The best part of this whole thing is that you get it at the venue. You rent it or buy it right at the door. You use it at the venue, and when you're done, it's recycled at the venue. You don't need to go out and buy a separate GPS watch. You don't need to charge a GPS device. You don't need a monthly service plan. That is Got the it. whole benefit of this system. All right. Now, 
how much is this going to cost me for a day if I'm with my children? It's going to cost you about $20 to rent it. Okay. And can this fun loop also be put onto a stroller, or can it be used in other situations? It can. There's no reason why it cannot be put on a stroller or another, another device. Yeah, I was just concerned if it's a little baby, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, there, are, there have been problems in some of these larger venues. What other venues can it be used in? What other applications, what other target markets are you looking at? It can be used in a variety of venues, county fairs, street fairs, um, state fairs, established amusement parks that are permanent or more temporary type of venues. It can be used even in the future. We're thinking of nursing homes where there are dementia patients who may wander off. There are many mm -hmm. applications. We're starting off with the, the child tracking. Okay. Let, I'm going to switch a little to um, the CEO mm -hmm. and leadership skills. Do you find it to be an advantage being a female entrepreneur? Or I think do you it find is. It's a disadvantage. I think it's an advantage. And tell me why. I think it's an advantage because um, I feel like I have more access to people. People are, their guard is down when I approach them and when I speak with them. Well, you're charming. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. <laughs> but for whatever reason, maybe combined with my gender, that has, uh, has helped us to make a lot and form a lot of relationships that are beneficial. And do you see, um, do you have any advice for, you know, women entrepreneurs that want to get in the business? Do you have to have a certain, a different demeanor, a different character? Um, you know, where can, where can you help them out? I would have to say, based on my experience, don't try to change yourself, I would tell the female entrepreneur. Don't try to change yourself and be someone you're not. Um, use all your assets to your advantage. Um, I think that would, be, that would be it. I think if you try to be someone you're not, it's going to be very evident to whoever you're speaking with, and that's going to come off not as positive. And one final question. Uh, where is it current? Do you, you, is this currently in service somewhere? Not yet. We are at the point where we have a prototype. We yeah. have a pilot planned with a venue near San Diego, and we are making our market-ready prototype. We're just at that point where we're ready to move forward. Fantastic. Listen, I wish you the best of luck with Fun Loop. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it in operation. I'm really interested in the technology, particularly how it all fits together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I appreciate you being on our show tonight and uh, wish you the best. Thank you for having me, David. This is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. Thank you for watching. <laughs>
And if we work well together, then the customer on the outside can benefit. So we have different layers. Obviously, you know, we've got our employees, but on the outside we have our channel partners and we have our end user customers. Um, many of them go across different countries um, and some pretty sophisticated environments. But the core of everything is to be customer centric. And your customers recognize that, I think, when, when they feel and understand that internally you have that culture, right? It, that comes out, it's displayed in the way that you're interacting with your customers. Oh, sure, I hope so. That means I don't get good calls from my customers, right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> no, we do. We, we have, you know, we, we got really high customer um, satisfaction. We got one of the highest customer retention rates in the industry, Fabulous. which I'm really pleased about. But we work hard for customers. Mm -hmm. It's not just about servicing them. It's about understanding them. It's about putting yourself in their shoes every day and seeing what they go through. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about customer centricity, it's about understanding from their side everything that, that goes on. So how do you get evaluated by a customer? It's on perception, right? Mm -hmm. They don't really know what happens or what you're doing for them, but they perceive certain things. Mm -hmm. So the key to good customer um, relations in every form is good communication. Excellent. And not only outwardly, but also internally. Oh, absolutely. Internally. Yeah. Absolutely. You, yeah. you could, but it starts with fundamentals. You've got to have great ethics. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to have an appreciation for your customers. I tell, tell our staff all the time, our customers pay our checks. It's a question of respect. But the number one ingredient, number one out of everything, is you've got to build trust. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you build trust, your customers will trust you. Mm. So when we look at things like... Um, you know, some of our core principles. You know, everybody's got them. Um, I'll start with relationships before the transaction. You know, it's a tough one. Because mm -hmm. you, but if you treat people well, they'll be loyal. Mm -hmm. If you're professional, they're going to be there. If you care about others, um, you're going to have an environment that's going to stick with you. And th those are very, very strong things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Joey... In business, we know that there is what we call the war on talent. It's very difficult to bring in good talent into a, a company. So what, what does CISPRO do to attract the kind of talent that would have these uh, people that are customer-centric, that are trustworthy, loyal? What do you do to attract that kind of person? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. I think it's one of those hard ones. But I think it's a process. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I look at everything, um, the way into a company is a really small door mm -hmm. and the way out is a really big one. Mm -hmm. So if you interview well and you, and you stick to the right principles, for us, it's very simple. Right people, right seats. Mm -hmm. If you choose the wrong people and you put them in, in the seat that you think they're going to be on, it's never going to work. Mm -hmm. You've got to find the right people. Um, we're very fortunate that we have um, a large number of employees that have stuck with us for many, many years. I think this year, um, we, we actually really look after our customers. We've got um, our internal customers, our employees here. Mm -hmm. We've got seven that will be with us 20 years. How about um, that? You know, last year we had a whole bunch as well. But it can't just be the, the people that have been with you forever. You have mm -hmm. to attract the millennials mm -hmm. because they bring in fresh thought, yes. fresh ideas. As much as we may joke about how hard they are, they're, they're inspirational and um, they a joy of life to have. That's because terrific. they make things better. Mm. Great. If you were to look at your employee population, do you have a sense of how many are in that millennial group and that you've been brought bringing in in recent years? Oh, I could sum it up in one word: enough. Enough. Okay. <laughs> no, we have quite a few. Good. We really Good. do. Good. Excellent. You know, in certain departments, you're going to find more than others. So, um, typically around your marketing side, which has got a lot of social media and new type things, yeah, mm -hmm. um, the young ones really um, get attracted to that. In technology, um, they're really quick on the uptake in mobile and things. And remember, you know, CISPRO is a company that, you know, we provide our solutions on premise, on mobile, mm -hmm. and in the cloud. Excellent. So they, they get driven to certain areas, and they like Excellent. that. If you were described to describe your company's culture in one, two, or three words, how would you, what words would you select? You know, I, I think culture is really about an ecosystem, and you attract people that um, reflect the management and leadership of a company. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'd put into one, two, or three words, but I would really say it's about an ecosystem. It's about attracting people with like-minded approaches. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, a culture at CISPRO is a comfortable culture. It's a professional culture. It's one built on um, a family orientation in a, in a lot of ways. But it's also built on success and it's built on um, looking forward. Mm -hmm. You know, there's got to be inspiration in what you're doing and there's got to be um, a desire to win out there and there's got to be a desire to feel good about what you do. Excellent. So with that comes... Um, our culture is built on our customers. It's a customer-first centric culture. Terrific. Well, in closing, Joey, I want to thank you for being our guest today. I want to thank you for what your company does in helping businesses be more efficient, proficient, and ultimately profitable and successful. And also, I want to express my appreciation for all the exciting opportunities that you mm. give people. You fuel our economy by hiring people and giving them great work to do. So thank you for being on our show. Uh, thank you, Susan. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you for viewing Eye on Business. Um, I'm Joey Benedretti, President of CISPRO Americas, and here I am, Eye on Business. Hi, this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Eye on Business. And I want to welcome John O'Keefe. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good, thank you. John is the CEO and founder of the Center for Peak Performance and an author of books on neuroscience. Right, neuro leadership. Neuro, okay, we'll talk about neuro leadership. Tell us about yourself and how you got into this field. Okay. Well, uh, I was very fortunate to be very successful in uh, healthcare. And so the company came to me and said, We want you to teach what you did to others. And in the process, I found that I really liked mentoring people. And then in that process, companies came and said, You know, coaching is wonderful, but we need to do something that creates rapid change quickly. We don't have a year to two years to make a rapid change. We have a quarter. We have six months. So then we, well, that came in the process of, of uh, neuro leadership, where we focus on brain-based processes to make change quickly. It's all about habits and behaviors. All right. So when I first heard about the Center for Peak Performance, I actually thought you were sports. Right. You know, and I was hoping you'd help my tennis game. But can you, <laughs> can you apply neuroscience to... Sports, we're just, we're just applying it to leadership. No, absolutely. Uh, and, and in fact, athletes do very well in the program because it, it is about that process, uh, because it, the mind uh, works with the body. The body follows the mind. So once you connect that and understand how the brain works, um, all of those changes can happen very quickly. No, well, we may come back to that. I, okay. I, now, I read a, a, an e-book today, and um, the title of the e-book was Leadership Sucks. <laughs> now, okay. I, I'm not exactly sure that that's really the case across the board, but yeah. how do you prevent, through neuroscience, leadership not sucking? Well, that's, that's a good question and, and, a, and a large question, but the issue there is what we find when we're dealing with uh, C-level executives uh, usually is it comes down to the process of, uh, of fear, and it's fear of loss of control. And so whenever... Whenever an executive is running a company or trying to work on the company growth, those kind of situations, change happens. And the brain is, has two responsibilities. Uh, one is safety, and then one is reward. And so when that change happens, the brain does not judge it. All it knows is that it's changed, so it actually tries to keep you from change because the brain does not like change. All right, so you mentioned something. When you were talking, I was thinking of... Maslow's hierarchy of needs. How does this compare or fit in with the Maslow's hier hierarchy of needs? Do you train people to go up that level to different levels, or is this totally irrelevant? Well, that that helps. It certainly that that follows into it. But usually, uh, we have an assessment that we do for an individual, and we'll find out where the blocks are, where the limitations are, whether it's a conscious block or subconscious block, and then fully process that based on their specific needs. In other words, personalities are different, so we need to find out what the uh, personality style is, their learning channels, and we customize everything because everybody reacts differently. Now, is this, the, the two questions I have. One is, sure. it, is, this sounds like operant conditioning. So am, if I were your subject, so to speak, <laughs> are you going to do any Pavlovian stuff on me? Yeah, 
No, no, we, we don't do that. Um, but what we do do is find out where the limitations are and how your learning channels work and then customize that so we're reframing the way you think about a process. And then we go into a deep state process where the, the habits actually change. And that's the difference with classic coaching and what we do is that it's a deep level process, okay. uh, if that makes sense. Well, it does to a point, but is there a way to take it down to like a, a lower level to share with the viewership who or how you do things for a spe with a specific case? Can you give an example? Uh, you can cloak the example if you want. You don't want sure. to. Well, uh, one thing that comes to mind is we had a, uh, a VP come in. He had a chance to be an executive VP. Uh, loved his CEO, got along really well with him, and he accepted the position. And then when they started doing one-on-one -on -one interviews, planning whatever they were planning, he noticed he was breaking into uh, uh, sweats and, and nervous situations. So you always go to the doc, make sure everything's fine, and the doc right. said, you're, you're fine, you're clear. So he's referred to me, and, and in short, we found that his CEO had the same personality as his father, loved his dad. But when he was a kid, dad would travel. When dad came home, uh, it, it was, okay, Billy, I'll change the name, Billy kicked the cat, broke the computer, so it would be usher in to see dad would mean punishment. He transferred that to his CEO, so instead of planning business, it was always like, did I do something wrong? Is he going to fire me today? had nothing to do with what the CEO was thinking. So he went, ran in and reframed the way he thought about that process and got him focused on the relationship as it was. He accepted it, and he ended up doing very, very well. But this sounds like psychotherapy to a degree. Is it related to psychotherapy? Is it related to mindfulness? It's mostly uh, mindfulness in oh, that okay. process, yeah. And, and can you apply this? If, if, let's say I'm trying to build a consulting practice. I'm trying to build a manufacturing process. Right. Well, let's say I'm just trying to be better in the stock market. Yeah, exactly. Can I use it for that? Absolutely. It's all about the decisions that we make, and it's fine-tuning, and it's about clarity. And you'll hear a lot of people saying getting clear and focused, and so it's focus, concentration, and clarity are three of the key things for executives. All right. So do you, when you do this neuroscience, do you use an analytical platform, and then you analyze the results of the answers to questions? Do you do one-on-one -on -one interactive dialogue, or do you do, you do something as, as a combination? A combination. It all depends, again, on their personality and what they need. But we have, we have a form and a process, and then based on that, we work with them. Uh, usually it's a weekly process that uh, we walk them up the pathway of success, if you will. And, and how long would it take to see the results from when you start working with somebody to the results in the business? All right, in the business, a good question. Usually you'll see the internal change within two to three weeks. Okay. And then as applied, you'll begin to see changes in the business probably within uh, a month uh, to six weeks because that decision-making processes in most cases are what's being affected. So the decisions become very clear and concise and that, that uh, fear is gone and it's more about being empowered. Got it. And where can people learn more about neuroscience and neuroscience and leadership? Is there a, a website or is there reference material that you that people can look at? There is. Uh, on my website, it's uh, centerforpeakperformance.net. We have a variety of materials uh, that they can, they can go there and find out. Perfect. Well, Dr. John O'Keefe, thank you very much for being on our show tonight. It's been enlightening. I'd probably like to have you come back and maybe do some exercises with me. Oh, we'd love to. And see if I can actually improve somehow. There, <laughs> there, right. there you go. It's a good chance you can. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. Thank you for watching. I am Paul Brubaker. I am an HR leadership consultant, and you are watching Ion LA. Ion LA. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> not really. Ion business. <laughs> Doggone it. Okay, let's, let's do that one again. <laughs> Thank you. I would love to try.
Okay, you're up. I am Paul Brubaker. I'm an HR executive, and you are watching Eye on Business.